Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've made videos before on cancel culture and how we can only be cancelled if we cancel ourselves. And the key is just to keep on going. That honestly, in this day and age, I don't think that we should even consider whether it's a career or a hobby or just even something to do because we feel called to do it. I don't think we should put anything on social media or have any kind of online social media presence in this day and age, unfortunately, unless you're willing to have people come at you. Because uh, there's always going to be people out there that are going to laugh at you, that are going to call you names, they're going to criticise you, they're going to hate your opinion, particularly if you have opinions that are somewhat different to the ma to the masses. And to, uh, you know, woke culture is very prominent right now. People tend to jump on and bring the pitchforks. And if you're not willing to have that come at you, then I honestly think we live in an era where you just shouldn't put yourself online, is the truth of it. You know, obviously it would be lovely to live in a world where everyone could come on YouTube and express an opinion and <laughs> it's all it's all easy and people only comment if they agree or they have nice polite uh, debate, even if they disagree, but it's not realistic. In this day and age, it is not realistic and we have to learn to grow and evolve and work through our insecurities to be able to just continue in the face of that. I've had tons of insecurities myself, tons of insecurities about putting myself out there, about hearing criticism, about being insulted, but each time you kind of work through it and you feel stronger, it gets easier and easier and easier. And then you'll get the new the new challenge, but you work through that and it does definitely become easier. But I was watching a girl's channel and I really love her channel. You should check her out if you um, watch my stuff. I'm sure you'll like her stuff too, because I feel almost everything she says is pretty much what I feel. Her name is uh, Yolanda Melody, I think it is. And uh, I watched one of her videos today on cancel culture. I only just found her channel and I found her channel talking about OnlyFans actually. And um, we had the exact same opinions on it. <laughs> so much so that I think actually there's no point in making a video on it. Might as well go and watch her video. Um, but she also made a video on cancel culture and she put something forward that I hadn't even thought about if I'm honest with you. I think I have said before that a lot of these comments are clearly AI and trolls. And I had gotten onto that. The theory that she put across, or I really resonated with the theory that she put across and thought, actually, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. Because what she said was that in Hollywood or the rest of the world, there is a saying, uh, no press is bad press. And that's because often when people tended to attract a lot of criticism, their name got out more. You know, when they were involved in a lot of scandals, they got out there more and their fame would rise. And she was saying the only area this isn't really happening is on YouTube. And she put the question out there that perhaps this is a way to control YouTube because we have so much freedom on here as creators. I mean, I know that's too basic because obviously these platforms also have, a, you know, a lot of control over what they can take down, etc. But there are other platforms and there are other avenues and there's always some way you can get your voice out there. And I did resonate a lot with what she was saying, you know, because quite often somebody will make a video on something and it will just really spiral with hate comments and they do all seem very bot-like and it really is mostly just comments the thing is some channels do get taken down but some of these channels do not take get taken down the person just removes themselves how many times over the last few years have we seen youtubers face so much attack and criticism purely from comments that they actually remove their channels or they step back and they come up with these massive apologies you know oh, i've i've gone away and i've really reflected and a lot of what these people got cancelled for you know some of it was a bigger deal than others some of it was really very insignificant stuff in my opinion um and the amount of attack that these people got was completely unjustified yet these people felt so hounded and attacked by just comments that they actually stepped back themselves and i am actually starting to wonder if this lady was right and actually you know there is this agenda that because of all the freedom that we have now in all these different platforms where we can come on and share our voice, this kind of cancelling is a great way to police these platforms. And I feel like it makes us, it, it does put you in a place of fear, it puts you in a place of fear of speaking your truth. I fell for it myself, you know, I definitely um, actually didn't, put videos on YouTube for a long time because I was actually genuinely really afraid of getting attacked, criticised, um, 
and cancelled really uh, and that affecting other areas of my life like my business and definitely this is one of the things that you know I do see all these things as rites of passage and tests because if you just keep going forwards you'll just continue to build and you only have to see it with Russell Brand quite recently you know the amount of cancelling he got and the backlash that he got and he's just continued on on Rumble and everything seems to have dropped off now. Everything seems to have gone silent. I haven't heard about any court cases and he got demonetized on YouTube, but he's finding other avenues to make money. And that's somebody that didn't just bow down in the face of cancel culture. They just continued and they're continuing to pick up. I don't think he even lost any followers the last time I checked on YouTube. And that really does show that you really only can cancel yourself. You know, I don't know what went on with that. I always said that I didn't want to make any opinion without seeing the result of a court case, which at this point doesn't even look like it's going to happen. It looks like it's all kind of blown over, which makes the whole thing that YouTube did via being pushed by the government even worse because he ended up being demonetized for something that at this point still hasn't gone to a court of law. And I'm not going to repeat a video on that one, but whatever you think of him, that should kind of terrify you, right? Um, that somebody can be demonetized without any legal proceedings. Um, but anyway, around uh, cancel culture. So this is even less reason to fear the cancel mob because she might be right. Maybe they are not even real. And actually, I don't know if anyone's tried debating with these people that come at you sometimes. Like I've only had mini, mini sections of it. And what also uh, makes me think she might be right and have a point that the, these are AIs and bots is that it has actually happened to me before and it does seem to be on key words and key trigger words and I've not had it done in a big way like I said but every now and again I get the red pill guys really come at my channel what was really interesting is it must have just been some kind of um keyword that triggered it and i would just get this influx of red pill guys just all over my videos i mean to a smaller degree right none of my videos have uh, gone super violent or anything but I, it was a notable difference that they suddenly would plow in and the thing is when you try to debate with these people as well a lot of them clearly just don't seem like people <laughs> and yeah they could just be people that are just trolls and they're not really there to have proper debates and they just want to trigger you but they could also be ai ai is very intelligent now it's capable of having conversations that probably you would realize weren't quite authentic but would be convincing enough certainly to look like a troll and um that's the ai that we're allowed to see i mean imagine how advanced ai is where we can't even see it like imagine how advanced it is behind closed doors that hasn't even been released to the public so i'm sure it's capable of having low grade debate on various topics on youtube at this point and sometimes i do feel like that's why i've actually stopped debating really online because i do often feel like i'm debating with um an unconscious um conscious person which could easily be ai um but it actually wouldn't surprise me at all if she was right and there's certain keywords and things that trigger these mass bots that just come at you with hate in a way of sort of self-policing these channels because we do have so much creative freedom now and yet there still is that lesson in there that we you know even better if you think gosh these people are probably not even real even more reason not to pay them any attention and even more reason not to let them let you live in fear of them on your channel and I think it's a growing process for everybody I just said in my last video that if you have so much fear of any of this stuff you either have to be willing to work through it or to just forget having an online presence altogether like at this point in society it doesn't really you can't pick either or you just have to accept the territory as it comes and these days there's very little you can say without triggering somebody out there in the world I'm quite blunt I'm quite outgo like you know I'm quite forthright with my opinions I don't have really any kind of <laughs> filter or analyzing before I say something whereas when I'm on here you know definitely at the beginning I'd always be thinking oh my gosh is this gonna offend someone am I gonna get demonetized am I gonna get cancelled and then I think just you see how ridiculous it is and how little it takes to get them <laughs> to trigger people that you just think whatever right <laughs> I might as well just come on here but I mean there's still parts of me that are like that I'm probably still held back if I'm like really going all out <laughs> um 
I maybe that that's a good thing. I mean, maybe we shouldn't just jump on here and go completely all out with uh, with everything we think without filtering at all. <laughs> and another thing that actually does make me buy into her theory that cancel culture is simply a hoax or an agenda is that when I'm online. I do tend to think, wow, we have reached epic proportions of triggeredness in society now where people seem unable to handle any opinion that's just not 100% in alignment with theirs. And mostly people get triggered on these kind of woke agendas. But then actually when I meet people in person, it's very rare that I meet one of these people that I meet on the internet. You know, I, I don't think I, there's the odd person, but they sort of are an anomaly. So in person, it's an anomaly to meet somebody that's as triggered over and sensitive as these people on the internet. And then on the internet, it seems an anomaly to meet somebody that's sane and can actually have like a regular debate with you. So maybe, you know, that is because these people online are not real people. And maybe she's right. And it is mostly false bots. And, you know, the thing is with these things that they take other people along with them as well. So, you know, that's part of the propaganda and then people jump on the wagon. So there's probably a mix. There's probably some real people that have been sort of propaganded into canceling these people. There's probably some bots in the system as well. And they're all kind of merging into one. But that actually really, for me, does make me think because... I remember over the COVID lockdowns just thinking everybody was crazy because everybody online seemed to be crazy. And then I remember when I started going out to events, um, even people with totally, diff totally different opinions to me could have totally normal intellectual debates around it without going off on some, you know, labeling crusade and calling me a misogynist, sexist, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, I never really encountered that in person. It was the very occasional person um, where I would encounter that. And I'm not saying I never encountered it, but it was very occasional. And maybe that's just because we don't really cross paths. We don't go to the same places. We don't even gel to get off the ground, to get into a conversation. Or maybe it's because this online trolling and spewing hate at people with different opinions is an agenda and it's online <laughs> and they're not even real people for the most part maybe she is right and maybe she's not and just in person we're more picky about who we share our energy with and we don't have that ability on the internet so what do you think do you think cancelling is really a hoax and an agenda and it is the result of bots being unleashed on us to make us all live in fear and worry about what we speak and put online or do you think it just really is that society is insanely sensitive these days and can't handle any other opinions but their own? Let me know what you think in the comments and I will speak soon. Bye bye.